pregame.com. LSU Clemson, it's bowl season. Free pick for me. I don't do much college handicapping during the year. I think there's real opportunity in the bowls. I think it's a different handicap in that motivation, again, is the key. So I'm going to share some of my thoughts. It's almost like a sounding board mm -hmm. and, and, and see if you agree with okay. me. Is So the first question in this game, and maybe let me ask you this way, scale 1 to 10, what is the motivation for each team? I think Clemson has more motivation because if you remember last year's ball game, they lose 70 to 33, get blown out by West Virginia. So this is a game they want. The unfortunate thing is they've lost five out of the last six games against the spread when they've gone bowling. They only win by one point in 2009 against Kentucky. So it's not a team that has a great track record in the bowls. And LSU is a team facing, you know, been playing for the national championship here, but. Their, their motivation, they've always done very well in the bowls, but what is their motivation here? So Marco has a, a great concept during the season, and it's that once a team loses the game that makes their season goal impossible, the next week is a flat spot. I gave it the name Dream Crusher, which I think doubles the value of the concept, just that name, the Dream Crusher. But here's the thing. We all know in our personal lives, when we're disappointed by something, that fades. Meaning the day after it's tough, the week after it's kind of right. tough, two months later, you kind of put it behind you. I think that's human nature. LSU, if they had lost you know, in the, in the SEC championship game and their dreams were crushed late, I think there might be that hangover. But if anything, this is kind of the last, you know, a way to kind of put a statement on the season that it wasn't a total disappointment. Would you agree that this isn't a, a total flat spot for LSU? Fully agree. Right. Now, you talk about the coaching, and, and this coach has played in four bowl games, one and three against the spread is, you know, my, one of my best buddies gr growing up played college ball, played in bowls, and one of the things I really picked his brain about was that certain teams, and then he later coached and, and saw it from multiple perspectives, certain teams understand the logistics and the mechanics around a bowl. How early do you leave? What hotel do you stay at? When do you take the bus over? I was actually at the Orange Bowl when KU played Virginia Tech, and I was hanging out on the periphery of the team, and, I mean, just to go to practice, they had a police escort, and there was like four buses just to go to the practice field. Te certain teams do well. Let's think back to uh, Joe Paterno and some of the teams that they would do amazingly well year after year in the bowls. It wasn't just a coincidence. I think that there's a, 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 a technique, a mechanics to bowls that some coaches get and some coaches don't. The fact that this coach is one in three ATS and got blown out last year, can you make the case that they don't, that Clemson doesn't have that down? Yeah, it's a great point. In fact, there's a trend out there to bet against first-year coaches in bowls. In fact, I think they're 0-5 this year doing so uh, because they've it's, never been I mean, there before. New. Everything is new. You don't know if you're doing it the right way. And you find a lot of coaches, if they lose their first bowl, they'll start calling around the next year to other people who have been there before, what do you do? And, you know, the national championship this year, Alabama's there every year. So they do have an advantage in that regard. So, yeah, that, that's something that definitely have to take a look at. Now, with Clemson, and here's the thing, a coach, when he comes in, he doesn't fire everyone. A lot of the support staff, now coaching, there's usually a big turnover, but the support staff stays the same. They're one in six ATS, their last seven bowls. So there's some hang, you know, there's some leftovers of people that were involved in the more losing bowl games against the spread. So I think that's a, an advantage for LSU. You know, Clemson scored 42 points a game, and their superior they, there was a newsletter that had check boxes based on, you know, there was 13 positions. Mm -hmm. And Clemson only had two check boxes in this game. One was a quarterback, one was at wide receiver. Now, Florida or LSU's strength on defense seems to be against the pass. So as much as I'd like to go towards the dog here, I, I, I you know, in general, because I don't like laying big points or laying points at all, really, right. I think that it might be an X is a no situation where Clemson's strength goes into LSU's strength, which isn't something I'm too excited about. Yeah, LSU's, well, all the top teams in the SEC have a lot of defensive speed, which is why they're so good defensively against the pass. 
and they also have a lot of speed because they can. Well, let's face it, Clemson's those special got, special teams touchdowns yeah. they stop that yeah. mostly. Uh, Clemson's got a, a very elusive quarterback. Uh, he's he's another RG three type of player. So a lot of teams in their conference just don't have the physical ability defensively, the speed to control him. To your, your top teams, your Florida, your Alabama, your LSU's out of the SEC, they have that ability. So that's a big advantage. And you know, you take a look at Clemson this season had another nice season, but when they played quality teams. When they played their Florida State, South Carolinas, they lose both those games by double digits. So they've had a very easy schedule on this season. It's a step up game for them. The motivation is there, but I'm not sure the talent is there. All right, so let's think about it. The biggest advantage that a batter has is he doesn't have to bet every game. All right, so oftentimes you see a situation where like, well, Clemson is, is, is not maybe institutionally good at bowl games. Maybe LSU is set up to, to stop their strength. So you think, well, I want to go with LSU. But it's hard to bet on a public team laying points. It's hard to think you're getting real value. So I'm actually looking to the under in this game. I think the X's and O's matchup, combined with the fact that I'm not sure, you know, LSU, are they looking to run this game up if they have a chance? I think that, and, and remember, bowl games, especially when they're standalone bowl games or they're, you know, featured on TV, or, you know, ESPN or a big station, I think that the public gets involved and there's naturally a drift upwards. So I don't love this, but I have a strong opinion on the under. I can, see, I, I can see that. And uh, as for Les Miles not trying to run up a score, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's one of those coaches that has – has in his past run up scores and you know let's face it this LSU offense has not been very good this year so if he's got a chance to put some extra points yeah, on the board he may do so. All right so we've talked it through let's make it official. The thing about bowl games is a lot of people want to bet them. I call it pizza money. So this is an opinion for me, but I like the under here. I think it's about the value we're getting because this is a marquee type game on national TV. Plus, I think the LSU defense matches up well against Clemson's offense. Opinion on the under. All right, my man, I didn't go so badly. No, you helped me out, you know. You if I'm handicapped in college, I want you beside me. There you go. All right, guys, next up, oh, wait, another college pick from RJ, Wisconsin Stanford. And then we're actually going to be talking Louisville, Florida. You can get all of our videos at pregame.tv.